സഹനാവതു സഹനൗഗുനക്തു സഹവീര്യം കരവാവഹൈ തേജസ്വിനാവതീ തമസുമാ വിദ്വിഷാവഹൈ ഓം ശാന്തി 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 ഹരിയോ പ്രണാം പൂജ സ്വാമിജി ഹാർട്ടി വെൽക്കം ടു ഓൾ ദ പാർട്ടിസിപ്പൻസ് who gathered here to join this class this is our second class of tattva bodha in english and the last class was an introductory class i will just quickly go through the important points which we have discussed in the last class vedanta is the essence of vedas veda means knowledge Veda is the revelation of rishis when they are in the meditative mood about the life of the about human life and their goal and the purpose what is the purpose of our human life happiness is the purpose why the happiness because it is our nature and we go but unfortunately we are in search of this happiness in the external world worldly objects and which are the happiness from those objects are very temporary and not permanent and not continuous so we want continuous permanent full happiness for that we have to look inside and our nature the our innate nature is the happiness and atma swarupam is the complete happiness without knowing this because of the ignorance we are searching outside so to make our search inside we have to learn our shastras and to learn the shastras to make it make that study easy our acharyas out of compassion has written several prakarana granthas they are called prakarana granthas which help us to study the vedanti terminology and tattva bodha is one of the text very preliminary text written by acharya bhagavat pada which explains the essence of the vedanta and the vedantic terminology and this text is in the form of question answer simple question answer style and we all let us all listen to swami ji's class with shraddha and bhakti and as usual the first one hour will be the class and the last half an hour for we have kept it for question answer either you can unmute unmute and ask the questions or you can put your questions in the chat box hari om first we chant the prayers in last class we learned om shrute smrate purana namalayam karunalayam namami bhagavat padam shankaram loka shankaram shankaram shankaracharyam keshavam badarayanam sutra bhashya krito vande bhagavanto punah punah ishvaro gururatmeti മൂർത്തിഭേദ വിഭാഗിനേ 
ವ್ಯೋಮವ್ಯಾಪ್ತೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ this is the prayer to our great acharya who is the author of this tattva bodha shankar bhagavat pad acharya so now just now we heard dr kamla ji she reviewed the last uh, class and summarized it so the important point we discussed in last class was the purpose of life for which the vedanta starts the happiness eternal happiness is the purpose of life now to achieve that to attain that level of happiness we are doing our effort and but we are not satisfied with that so then we think about the reason why there is no uh, no satisfaction what is the reason for that so there vedanta gives some reasons so we will study those reasons why we are not completely satisfied with our body mind elements how are we have this uh, body mind elements for our enjoyment so we have all the objective enjoyments our mind is completely engaged with uh, objects the enjoying the object perceiving them and uh, you know just uh, uh, enjoying them that's all but what is the subject who is the enjoyer so there is no chance to think about that we are engaged with uh, our life uh, duties life uh, you know whatever work we do in our life for our uh, our of and um, our own assistance for our survival that is uh, taking all our mind intellect so there is no chance to think about the observer the seer and whatever we study in our schools there also we on study about the observer we study about the objects so modern science only counts the objects there is no recognition for the subjective aspects of the life therefore when we talk about subject it become uh, no vedantic thought or the thought which goes in word so we are not used to that therefore sometimes we feel this vedantic thoughts are mystery they are very mystic it's very difficult to understand 
actually the subject is everything. The seer, the observer, the perceiver is everything. Without a perceiver, there cannot be any perception. So whatever we enjoy, this is because of the perceiver. The consciousness of the perceiver. The ability to receive it. So that is what we talk in our uh, Vedantic thoughts. So this is a very uh, special aspect of the life, the subjective part of our life, is the subject of Vedanta. With that, Vedanta talk about object as well, about the universe, the many uh, fold universe. Universe, the, uh, it, it is also a mystery. Nobody could understand what this universe is. So some very important point of some greatest uh, mysteries of our life. So the, with, the, uh, with the connection with the universe. What is the connection with the universe? And to know that, we should know who are we? What is our nature? Then only we can really know what are the object is. So therefore, the all subject of Vedanta seems to be very deep, very profound. So we feel uh, with our mind, when we think about that, we feel very, very a tough subject as Vedanta is very tough subject. The last talk, I mentioned this point. This is not real. So Vedanta is not a tough subject at all. Why the reason is, it is talking about ourselves. It is, it is talking about subject. Therefore, it is not a tough subject. But the reason is, why we feel so, is because our mind is not involved. We never thought about it. So this uh, subject, to learn this, as I said in last uh, class, we should know the Vedantic terminologies, the tradition, what, what the tradition says, the meaning and uh, definitions and practice of that. So for that, we learn this Tattva as a very basic test of Vedanta. So we will in every class, like this, something we will talk about Vedanta and its uh, depth. And then we will continue with the class, the subject. Because we should uh, continuously remember what we are learning and why we are learning. This is very important. Otherwise, the application of mind, if we are, uh, uh, we are not uh, uh, having these thoughts in our mind, why we are learning, what is the need to learn? Then uh, sometimes uh, we won't feel uh, no, so we are benefiting from this. Therefore, this is very, very necessary to remember in each talk. Now, uh, we have three slokas. The last class also I chanted. And 
this class also in the beginning as invocation we chant this slokas now i request all the audience to chant this slokas with me so that you can practice that then i will give uh, the general meaning of the shloka to understand what we are chanting so be ready to follow me i will chant part by part so this uh, shlokas are in anushtap meter the meter called anushtap so the first eight letters are well the complete meter and we have four parts four lines we can say and four lines are written in two lines according to the chanting style so first we chant one line as two parts then the whole line will be repeated once again श्रुति स्मृति पुराणा आलय करुणाल श्रुति स्मृति पुराणा आलय करुणाल श्रुति स्मृति पुराणय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक आर यू गेटिंग मी द साउंड द ऑडियो इज ओके हरि ओम यस यस ऑडियो इज ओके Yes, sir. Okay. So, you all chanted with me, Shruti Smriti Purana Nam. Or on say again, I repeat. So, audio is okay. Okay. Thank you. The second sloka. शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्य वंदे भगवंत पुनः पुनः सूत्रभाष्य वंदे भगवंत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो मूर्ति भेद विभागिने ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने
ವ್ಯೋಮವ್ಯಾಪ್ತೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ವ್ಯೋಮವ್ಯಾಪ್ತೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ these three are the famous shlokas on the praise of aatya shankaracharya bhagavat pada so we all know what shankaracharya did for us is sanadana dharma what we see today is because of aati shankara acharya so he in his time he did whatever he could to protect the sanadana dharma so the test books what we have today is all uh, revised by him as the commentaries and uh, stotras and prakaranas so we praise him in the beginning of our classes because of he is our adi guru the foremost guru of all gurus so now we see what the shloka says here this is all the three are traditional shlokas we don't know who composed it this is coming by tradition ಶ್ರುತಿ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಐ ಅಡೋರ್ ನಮಿ ಐ ಅಡೋರ್ ಭಗವತ್ ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಹುಸ್ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಹುಸ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಟು ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಕನ್ಫರಿಂಗ್ happiness to the world who led the world the loka shankara the word meaning that shankara sham means happiness joy kara means who is doing that shankara means who gives happiness sham karoti iti shankara so he is giving happiness to the whole world because through vedantic philosophy he gave all the happiness the complete happiness the eternal happiness so he was the uh, teacher of the master of vedanta so that way he uh, gave that happiness therefore he is shankara he was the in, incarnation incarnation of lord shankara so we believe in our tradition as per the stories that uh, shankara acharya was the direct incarnation of lord shankara so therefore shankaram shankara acharyam i adore bhagavat pada shankar who was shankar lord shankar himself now who was he what was his uh, special character why we adore him so the first line says karuna alayam he was abode of compassion mercy 
karuna alayam karuna means compassion alayam means abode he was uh, an embodiment of compassion therefore he did all this works whatever available today he established mathas to revive sanadana dharma and he traveled all over bharatavarsha at least three times and uh, thought vedantic philosophy and debated with other philosophies and gave uh, gave them good guidance to follow the vedantic philosophy so this is all very famous stories about shankaracharya what we have uh, today uh, is from our tradition so we follow that so this is all everything done by compassion why we always talk about compassion now the question comes when we talk about acharyas gurus and uh, god we talk talk about compassion you see the reason is if uh, such acharyas doing something for us they are not uh, doing for money or fame or any other material objects they are doing something for us to protect us to rise us up so therefore their compassion is the main reason and without compassion this teaching is not possible because we know if guru is compassionate when we go to guru we learn more because compassion is an emotion which touches our hearts so this teaching of spirituality is heart to heart it goes through heart and received and stored in intellect then the reasoning and all other comes so therefore the guru and shishya master and disciple relation is very important here and this karuna the word karuna the compassion shows that so in those days there was gurukulams the schools where uh, students uh, go and uh, learn their learnings the gurukulam the house of guru they used to stay there with the guru and uh, guru the mother uh, the wife of the guru so guru and uh, their family and one with the family there therefore it is called gurukulam so there when they uh, leave the students go and leave and learn this from directly from guru so this karuna the compassion the motherly feeling fatherly feeling comes there so therefore even today the relation between guru and shishya the real guru and real shishya is it is bound with compassion it is we can say the only compassion so the guru can make any student in no as enlightened with his compassion that we believe that therefore our acharya shankara acharya was so compassionate he was uh, really abode of compassion karuna alayam and not only that he was shruti smriti purananam alayam shruti smriti purananam alayam he was again the abode of shruti 
Smriti and Purana. This is three different scriptures. First one is called Shruti. So Shruti Vedas. He learned all the Vedas. The Veda, Veda Mantras, Veda Suktas were in his time. And then Smritis, the traditional uh, codes, what we say, the law book of Sanadana Dharma, that is called Smriti. And Puranas, legendary history or ancient history, the, our, our cultural history, that is called Purana. The word uh, Purana is misunderstood today. People translate Purana as mythology, but it is not right. Puranas are not mythology. They are our cultural history. This we will discuss later because it's a different subject. But now we'll know what is this Shruti? Why it is called Shruti? Why it is called Smriti? And Shankaracharya was as the gurus of all guru and he was uh, an incarnation, incarnation of Lord Shiva and he was the abode of compassion and abode of Shruti, Smriti and Puranas. Now, Shruti means oral knowledge. What has been heard the word meaning of Sruti can be translated as what has been heard. The oral tradition, the Vedas, uh, uh, whatever we, uh, we know as Vedas today, they were practiced and learned orally. So hearing, hearing is very important there. In those days, there was no book no support of book and not uh, actually even today people learn Vedas by hearing only. The reason is what is written in the books with the alphabetic uh, no, no, what we have today, Sanskrit alphabet, what is written in the books is not actually Vedas. This is that whatever is written there indicates the words and words are pronounced. So the chanting of Veda mantras are called Vedas. The reason is the meter, the tune in that Veda mantras is very important for the Veda chanting. All the Veda mantras are based on swaras. So when we chant swara, swara means uh, the tune, uh, the matras, udata, anudata, and swarida, they have different uh, uh, level of matras. So they chant with that. That chanting is called Veda mantras. So what is written in the book is indicating that chanting, that's all. It means only outside help. Therefore, by reading Veda books, we cannot learn Veda. This should be remembered. Therefore, when people ask, now there are so many books printed, published uh, on Vedas, uh, the translation of Vedas or even Mula Mantras of Vedas. Are they Vedas itself? No. I won't say that. What is recited by Guru and Shishya, this is the real Veda. You can take the help of book. Like now we are learning Tattva Bodha. Uh, learning by chanting and uh, by translating it. But we have a PDF book with us to see what is chanted and what we are learning. So therefore, the Shruti is very important. The Shruti, 
uh, learning things. Now, how these Vedas came as Shrutis? This is uh, very interesting to know why these Vedas are Shrutis and how it came. We know our Rishis in their meditation, these Vedas were revealed. Rishis were not the authors of Veda, not the writers of Veda. But in their mind, in their pure mind, the Vedas were revealed. They were contemplating, meditating on the sound, the sound outside. They want to know the origin of this creation, and where this creation comes. They meditated on that, meditated and meditated for a long time. Then at last they reached the source of the sound, the source of the all the sound that is Om. They reached there. Primordial sound we can say. So that they reached there and that sound, they found that sound is the creator. So that sound is everywhere. Each object has that sound. So they found that sound is within them. So they experienced that, that Om there. So the origin of Shruti is from there. So we say the Omkara is Parabrahma, the supreme consciousness, supreme existence, and supreme knowledge, which is everything. So when they experience this, in their mind, the vibration of that sound. From there, the Omkara came. And after that, the words, what we pronounce, the words of the Veda, Rigveda, Ayurveda, and all those appeared to their mind. And they uh, gave to their tradition now, their successors, their uh, students. So they taught them and they also trained their students. So similar uh, this way, the tradition came. And after that, uh, people tried to uh, write down it and document it. So whatever we get today, is all from that. So this was the tradition of Vedas. Therefore, it is called Shruti. The origin of Veda is also Shruti. And it is learned through hearing, by hearing. So Guru pronouns and Shishya follow this. This is Shrutis. And these Shrutis are called Apaurusheya. This is not man-made. So that we will discuss later. Now the second one is Smriti. As I told, the Smritis are memories, you no know, recollections of the Rishis. So what they learn, they recollect. It means they write on that. So the Smritis are uh, human made. The authors are there, like uh, Manu Smriti, the author is Manu. Yatnyavalkya Smriti, the author is Yatnyavalkya. So it is different from Vedas. Uh, and Smritis, mostly, most of the Smritis, they talk about uh, 
all the subject of uh, our uh, spiritual life and uh, uh, traditional uh, living of the, our culture and uh, the courts and laws of the life and everything they talk about. Even politics, in many of the Smritis, you have a, a long discussion on politics, how to uh, rule a, a country, what is the duties of a king, and so that. So this is Smriti. Now, why we need these Smritis? The Surdis we need to learn uh, the, the supreme knowledge or the knowledge of uh, Paramatma, the supreme uh, consciousness. But why we need the Smritis? Because Sankaracharya is a scholar in Smriti and Sruti both. So Smriti we need for practice. Now, what Veda says, we have to practice it to bring to our day-to-day -day life how we can practice it. So this uh, rules of the uh, rules of the practice is mentioned in this smritis. Therefore, it is traditional court books, the laws of Hindus or whatever we say. And then comes Puranas, as I told, Puranas are not mythology, but they are uh, ancient history. So our ancient history, where we can search? Puranas, in Puranas and Itihasas, like Mahabharata and Ramayana. This is our ancient history. Why it is not mythology? Because it is not something imagined and in practice. Whatever there in the Puranas, there in Veda. Actually, we can say the Puranas are more elaborated commentaries on Veda Mandras. There are so many examples are there for that. So what is said in Vedas, Puranas elaborate with the uh, some uh, examples and uh, you know, some more elaboration on that. So with stories, stories of uh, uh, a person who practiced it or many persons. So this is the stories we have in so many different stories. Uh, repeated stories are there in Puranas. So we need Puranas to know some practical things. So, Idihasa Purana Bhyam Vedam Samupa Brimhayet. It is said in Mahabharata. Vedavyasa says, if you want to know the practicality of Veda mantras, one should learn Idihasa and Purana. Then only we can, uh, we will know the correct meaning of Veda mantras. So, because what is said in Vedas are elaborated in and this Puranas and uh, Smritis. So, this is Surdis Prati Purana Alayam Karuna Alayam. So, this, uh, this is how we understood the first sloka. And the next sloka, Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badrayanam Sutra Bhashikrdo Vande Bhagavanto Punapunaha. I salute again and again the Sutrakara and Bhashyakara. Sutrakara, who was the author of Sutras, Brahma Sutras, that is Vedavyasa, and Bhashyakara, who commanded on those Sutras, that is Sankaracharya. So I adore them again and again. I salute them again and again. It's both these rishis. And who were they? Shankaram Shankaracharyam. As I said, Shankaracharya was the incarnation of 
Lord Shankara. So the sloka says, Shankara, Shankaracharya is Lord Shankara himself. No difference. And Badarayana Vedavyasa, the author of Brahma Sutras, is Keshava himself, Lord Vishnu himself. So Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam. The poet says, uh, who prays this, he says, I, I believe, I accept Shankaracharya as Lord Shankara and Vedavyasa as Lord Vishnu. So I, therefore, I salute them again and again because they are the people who uh, brought our Sanadana Dharma into this level of practice with a profound philosophical background, uh, reviving the philosophy to the normal people. So therefore, I salute them and again and again. Now the third sloga says, Ishwaro Guru Ratmeti Murti Bheda Vibhagine Vyoma Vadvyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murtaye Namaha. I salute Dakshina Murti. Dakshina Murti, the form of Lord Shiva as Guru. Guru Dakshina Murti. So Shiva has many forms. One of that is Dakshina Murti. So he as the master, as a guru, he teaches to his students. So that Dakshina Murti and the form of Dakshina Murti, I salute. Now, what is the nature? What is the character? Who is Dakshina Murti? He says, Yomavad Vyapta Dehaya. Dakshina Murti is not just the form, what we see. It is not the body, what we see. But Vyomavad Vyapta Dehaya. Dakshina Murti is all pervading. Vyomavad, as the uh, sky is uh, everywhere, so all pervading. Similarly, the Dakshina Murti is also all pervading. So Vyomavad Vyapta Dehaya. Dakshinamurtaye Namaha. Now the first line says, this Dakshinamurti is Ishwara, the Supreme Lord, the creator of the world. The Ishwara and Guru, and my Guru, and he is Guru to all the students. So Ishwara, Guru, Atma iti, Atma self, our own self. So the Supreme Lord and Guru and Atma, the Ishwara, Guru and Atma. Now all the three has a, the same character, the same nature as consciousness, Sat Chit Ananda, existence. Consciousness and bliss. So now Ishwara is also uh, Satchidananda and Guru is also Satchidananda and this Atma, our own self, is also Satchidananda. Therefore, Ishwaru Guru Ratmeti Murti Bheda Vibhagine embodied in different forms, embodied in different forms. This Krishna Murti is embodied in different form as Guru and Ishwara, Guru and Atma. So Murti Bheda. Murti means body, a form. There are many, many, many forms. So here we are remembering three forms, but all the forms what we see in this creation is the form of Dakshina Murti only. Now here the Dakshina Murti is formless as its nature. Dakshina Murti is Atma only. Dakshina Murti is Paramatma. Dakshina Murti is Brahman. 
So that Brahman, which has no names and forms, beyond names and forms, formed in this uh, Ishwara, Guru and the Atma, so that we can do worship, we can do prayers to these forms. Now, the last point we have to remember here is, why do we do all these prayers? What is the reason for these prayers? What is the need for this prayer? You see, before doing anything, now that we have uh, the feeling that we are learning Vedanta, now I am talking, I know that I am talking, I have the feeling I am talking about Vedanta. I am the speaker. And you have the feeling that you are the listeners. Now, this has some ego. Because if I think I am a speaker, I have that ego. With that, I am speaking. Now, when we do prayer, our feeling changes. We uh, salute to the Lord, to the all-pervading consciousness and surrender our ego that we, whatever we learn, we learn from that tradition. As I uh, just now, we discussed about Sruti. It came from tradition. Nobody can claim that this is my words. I'm talking my words. This is my uh, understanding. It's my, it's my experience. Nobody can say that. Because from the tradition, this knowledge is passed on. So we got from our gurus and our guru got from their gurus. Therefore, prayer makes us pure. Our mind surrenders and it, it becomes free to learn. Otherwise, even this small ego as a teacher, as a student, uh, no, there are so many things that we don't know what so many are there. So this all comes with when we listen to such talks or uh, sasanka, we remember ourselves that we remember we have learned this and you know, this and that, all those. Therefore, our mind works like that. Uh, all the three important invocation shlokas so in all the classes we chant, uh, we start with this invocation slokas. And therefore I request uh, our listeners, the participants to learn these slokas by chanting and repeating it. And slowly you will remember it, okay? So, next class, we will start uh, with the invocation prayer of the test, Tattva Bodha. Now, we are not entered in that because time is over. So, we uh, learned these three slokas. So, I stop uh, my speech here. Now, for your time, now you can ask your questions. Swamiji, there is one question. What is the sequence between the Purana and Itihasa? Yeah, okay, very good. Uh, Purana and Itihasa, the Puranas, as I said, they are uh, connected to, directly connected to uh, Smriti. They are the commentaries or elaboration of Srutis and Smritis. 
actually puranas are also under smritis when we take uh, smritis uh, all so that it comes as purana itihasa smriti uh, together the sequence when we see uh, first we learn the chanting of veda mantras who are who are able to learn those and after that the practice of veda mantras that is according to smritis that is the tradition of practice then uh, to know more in a experiential level who all are practiced all these rules and what they gained from that to know that we learn puranas now this what i am saying uh may be a different view what we have heard about puranas people say about puranas they are all uh, stories uh, without logic you know uh, irrele irrelevant uh, 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 no stories no nothing is there in that but that is not true even you see puranas so many uh you know, things that we should uh, learn from puranas the geography of our nation geog uh, geographical knowledge and medicine and jyotisham there are so many things in puranas so these are the puranas they are helping our life even even we uh, today when we see what is hindu dharma if somebody asks people say it is like uh, what is said in bhagavata purana what is said in shiva purana or in uh, devi bhagavatam so today or even today you, uh, these puranas are very famous and our culture is based on those puranas and the other uh, uh, religions other people who are, who are questioning hindu dharma they ask from puranas only they don't know about veda and all those so the reason is for general no the general people the normal what uh, the life you know in the uh, what we lead for that there are so many things in puranas to learn very practical and very simple and when comes to itihasa itihasa as the word says it happens so itiha asa so this is based on uh, some real stories or something happened really and based on that again they give all the uh, advices and uh, injunctions and provisions and what should be done what should not be done all those are there in itihasas the speciality is that and in puranas compared to puranas the, in puranas there are some uh, historical facts or something some part will be there but those are elaborated in a different way but itihasas they are based on the uh, the uh, the story what already happened so you will we can get some evidence for that some uh, you know proof for that so this is the definition given in shastras for uh, itihasas so this is the difference we can say swami ji namo narayan namo narayan kd singh from lucknow okay please swami ji uh, you uh, cited three shlokas ha huh. but in my book from chinmay mission trust hmm these three shlokas are not given there they have started from mangla charan vasudevendra yogindram tattva gyan pradam gurum yeah that that i already told 
this Jee. this we are going to learn in next class this shruti smriti purana is a, a general uh, no shlokas uh, invocation shlokas we chant every day so therefore we should learn all these three shlokas okay okay because very famous shlokas no okay okay swami ji when the, the shruti the vedas hmm. ah. came into being in hmm. black and white hmm when they were written ah uh, when when they came in black and white ah uh, this shruti when then where then when were they were written yes matlab they uh, came into black and white can <laughs> you see <laughs> yeah yeah this is this is uh, uh, very interesting actually that is why we called uh, we called the shruti is as apaurushayas yeah. it's not uh, not written by human beings it revealed to them like uh, the reality is revealed what is what okay. was the what is there it is revealed that is the gravity was revealed to newton so he gave the theory of gravity so gravity was already there so the same thing we also say here now writing writing came yeah. much later so now even today we can see after computer our writing system changed okay and before that when there was uh, no ink they were uh, writing on stones no no like that on wood and like that so writing is uh, not very important here therefore i said here it is shruti is important oral uh, reciting is important with the swaras so that is what the veda is so this we will discuss Swamiji. later because this something okay. will come in the subject so there we will discuss the definition of paurusheya and apaurusheya what is Uh, uh, how we call it human uh, no and uh, uh, authors as human beings and non human beings all this we will discuss later because they are everything is uh, no we have to prepare for the students uh, they should uh, learn slowly there are so many technical things so that we will learn later okay swamiji swamiji next question is ah. it is said that the vedas can be studied by only the person who have undergone upanayan sanskar hmm and as much as hmm also there is restriction hmm. that only brahmad hmm kshatriya and vaishyas with upanayan hmm. sanskar hmm they can be given this yes. knowledge yeah and even even women are also prohibited to get yeah hmm. why is it so swami ji when the same atman is in all the being in all hmm. the human hmm. then why it is restriction you see uh, uh you are uh, you have worked in a office yeah. no you, i i i know you so i can say you were in a, no office where you are working with many so there there is some system no the system is there to manage the office similarly we have a system to manage the society this is anisant uh, uh way of managing society they uh, gave different duties to different people that was the in the beginning there was uh, no everything as one but after that it uh, there was uh, some reason or we can say uh, when the society grow grow up then the divisions came without division we cannot manage the society so like we want to manage our family also we have to divide duties similarly for a factory similarly for a 
office. So this was there in the tradition. So they gave duty to protect and recite, learn this Veda mantras. You see, to learn all the Vedas, even one Veda, Rig Veda, it takes many, many years. And full dedication, you need to uh, spend your all day by practicing that. If you try to uh, remind, uh, remember these three slogas what we just uh, recited, you will know the difficulty. So uh, repeating it and repeating uh, many, many repetitions, then only you will remember that. Similarly, uh, the way to learn the Veda Mantra, there was uh, full time work, full uh, all life work. So therefore, some people are given those duties. Now, therefore, that division was there. That division is because of karmas that we know. It is obvious that uh, this division was made because of karmas. Now, regarding uh, women, ladies learning the Vedas, that is also with that reason. Because the Veda learning and practice need the uh, time and uh, the ladies, they have another other duties of family. That uh, bringing up the child and no, uh, growing up the child like that. So this, uh, this uh, the families to manage the family system, the all duties, the all the management of family was on ladies, the housewife. Now, this, this is a very practical thing. Even today we know if uh, uh, the housewife are not take, take, taking care of the family and then what happens, what problems happen to the family. So this is the general reason we can say. This is also, uh, again, there will, uh, no, there are so many questions and so many social reasons uh, are there to discuss on that we will discuss uh, by the time when we learn little more because uh, the subject is connected to Atma, is not connected to this, what you ask. Because Atma is everywhere, therefore everybody should learn Vedas, we cannot say. Now you, if you see, uh, all can learn Veda. Nobody is objecting because our constitution gives the freedom to do whatever you want. If you want to learn Vedas, you can learn. Now, how many are learning? Just uh, <laughs> take a uh, count. The freedom is there. If they want to learn, they can learn. But now, comparatively, 100 years before or 200 years before, if you compare, now very few learn Vedas. So therefore, there are so many other reasons, social reasons. Oh, that is uh, that we will discuss later. Now, Swamiji, they, I um, I was told that there are two uh, major portions of Vedas. One is Karm Kand, and other is Gyan Kand. Hmm. And this Upanishad comes under Gyan Kand. Yeah. So whether Upanishad, uh, the learning of Upanishad is allowed to all for supreme knowledge. Yeah, this but, uh, this or only uh, Karm Kand uh, are restricted. Yeah, this is uh, particularly uh, for the Upanishads or so Vedantic knowledge, all are eligible. Who wants to get liberation, Mukchuttam. Therefore, what is uh, connected to Karmakanda, it is all duty-based things. And this is intellectual knowledge. Therefore, uh, basically, uh, this is uh, uh, to all of them who has these qualifications, what we call as sadhana chatushtaya, mumukshutva. So whoever have, that can be have. Because jnana, for that supreme knowledge, there is no boundaries, no limitation. It's unlimited. And it is beyond body, mind. So therefore, there is no uh, division in that. It is 
beyond all the divisions. Therefore, it is allowed. And even okay. when we see our Puranas and the stories, we can found, find many uh, things related to that. If they are, if somebody is from any caste or any Varna, if he is realized, all the people will respect him and uh, worship him. So this we have see, uh, see we have seen in our uh, scriptures, and today also we see that. So therefore, uh, it is quite possible. The, Swamiji, last question, but not yeah. the question, but yeah. rather it is request yeah. to you that uh, this uh, class uh, uh, it is running once in a week. Hmm. Can you uh, increase the frequency at least two times in a week? So that uh, is a very no, serious let's, knowledge. Let's, and let's this is basic see that knowledge. Now, first, uh, first once in a week, uh, let us go with this and then we will see. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Pranam uh, Swamiji. Namo Narayan. Hari Om. Hari Om. Namaste, Swamiji. Ah. Uh, my question is regarding uh, understanding the categorization of uh, texts that we study. For example, yeah. that uh, uh, Shruti are the Vedas, the Veda mantras that are seen by the Rishis. Um, the confusion uh, uh, is between Itihasa and uh, Smriti, because uh, I have seen in uh, uh, during my MSc program in yoga as well that ah. uh, Bhagavad Gita falls under the category of Smriti. However, hmm. Ramayana and Mahabharata come under hmm. Itihasa. Yeah. And you said Itihasa are those um, uh, historical events. They are basically yeah. real events, later on yeah. elaborated uh, by Rishis, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Bhagavad Gita is a part of Mahabharata. How is correct, that coming in the Smriti? Because the other yeah. examples for that are Manusmriti, they are like uh, ethical or uh, uh, value-based texts, right? Dharmic texts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Under just that. now I indicated that point. When we generally say Purana, Itihasa, and Smritis, all together are called Smritis. It is a oh. general term used. When we uh, try to understand particularly what is Smriti, that is traditional code or law, uh, law books of the uh, uh, Sanadar Dharma. Okay. That is uh, uh, in particular. And Puranas, because in Puranas also, there are so many laws, you know, uh, what you say, injection and the prohibition and everything, the, every uh, as, aspect of that is there. So story, based on stories. In Smritis, you, you won't found, uh, find any uh, stories there. So Smritis are without stories. Only examples are there, small examples okay. relative to uh, Puranas. And uh, similarly in uh, Itihasas. Itihasas, you will uh, get, uh, as I said, some direct proofs, uh, some historical events uh, like that. So what has happened? And whatever said in Puranas, everything is just based on knowledge only, but uh, we cannot say that has happened. There are so many things they add into that. Okay. Therefore, uh, the cultural uh, uh, history is there in both Puranas and Idhyas. But Idhyasas are more on incident, incidental, uh, you know, the life of some uh, person or a group of people, the event what happened. So that okay. is the difference when we uh, talk about it particularly. Generally, those are all under Smritis. And how about Shaddarshanas, Swamiji? Shaddarshanas are not called as Smritis because they have the different term as Darshanas. The Darshanas we can translate as uh, philosophies, what has been uh, no, experienced in that way. Say, say separate because they don't, uh, all the Darshana Shastras, uh, they don't follow the Vedas uh, completely or Smritis or no, they, they, that, is a, uh, that is a vision of a Rishi. So he, he found out, uh, he, he experienced that. Uh, he, because Sankhya Darshana is uh, Kapila Rishi's vision. 
So therefore, it is called darshana. So he experienced it and he gave to the uh, world to learn about that. Therefore, darshana shastras are not call, called as smritis. Uh, Hariyam Swamiji, uh, my Hariyom. question is, uh, how one knows if he became a Jeevan Mukta? What is the measure of knowing he became a Jeevan Mukta or not? Yeah, it is very simple. Uh, as you know, you are a human being. How you know that? How we... Uh, know that we are human being. Uh, similarly, when he has the experience as all-pervading Brahman, he knows that I am not a human being, but all-pervading Brahman. The all beings are in me, and I am there in all beings. So he feels that. So there is no reasoning. In our experience, whatever we experience directly, there is no need for reasoning. So before become Jivan Mukta, he will learn all the Shastras and use the reasoning and the, all the technical and no, whatever it is there. But after, once it is realized, there is no need for reasoning and no need for practice. As we don't practice in the morning, getting up in the morning, we don't say, I am a human being, I am a human being, I should be a human being, I, know, I am uh, a man or woman. We don't, we don't practice this. This is just inherent in us. Just we feel. We never forget. So this is the experience of Jivan Mukta. So once he experiences, the experience remains in him. Now what we are learning, we are trying to know what we should experience or we could experience. We are trying to know intellectually or uh, what you say, verbally we are learning it. So with this learning we will get some ideas, some clarity of thoughts, then we will apply it with uh, uh, faith and faith on those what we have on you know, our thoughts. So this, this is what is practice. It is called practice. So sravana and manana and nididhyasana. All the threes are sadhanas. After that, the realization comes. The realized soul never, he has, uh, there is no need to practice. The practice stops. Okay, so we will learn this, the character of Jivan Mukta in this Tattva Bodha, the last part of Tattva Bodha. Any other question? Swamiji, Hariyom. Ah, Hariyom. Patmavumar, Arapura Patmavumar. Ah. Shivananda, Shivananda. Ah. Shivananda. Swamiji, when I can you, in a Swamiji's text, no written text. Please, uh, Swamiji's text, written text, let us in any text, Swamiji written. On this Tattva Bodha? Yes, yes, Swamiji. Ah, Tattva Bodha, uh, we have published uh, uh, Tattva Bodha in uh, Shankara Saraswata Sarvaswam, published by 
Asha Vidya Pratishthanam Niyatunkara. So in that, uh, the Tattvavoda test is there with the translation in Malayala. Oh. Not in English. In English, yet to publish. Yeah. Uh, kindly, in WhatsApp group, details. Ah, yeah. We can uh, send the details. It's already there. Uh, once again, we will send it. Sameji, one point about and uh, how can we, uh, when we can, if we are with a Guru, then we hmm. can know that we can separate from Guru and free independently. You see, <laughs> for that, if you ask me, you cannot separate yourself from Guru. Because Guru may not be there physically. The teaching of Guru will be there with you. Therefore, once you learn, once you get the Diksha from a Guru, then there is no disconnection. You cannot separate Guru. As you cannot separate your father and mother, they may be in the physical body, may not be, but you are with, you, know, you have to respect and you, the, the parents will be with you. So similarly, you cannot separate Guru in that level. Yes, physically, uh, you can learn from Guru. And after learning, when Guru feels that you completed your learning, that is our tradition. Eh? Nowadays, uh, nowadays, we cannot say that because nowadays the course system came. So one year course, two years course, or one month course, one week course. So after the course, the students uh, get the certificate. So they become certified uh, no, students. So they learn they, whatever, Vedanta, Yoga, or whatever. As we uh, get uh, certificates from our uh, schools and universities. So here, the Guru gives the certificates at you have learned whatever you could, and I have taught you whatever I could. So this is the tradition says. Then the guru says that you completed your vidya, now you can go and go and do your work. So that is the time when Shishya physically separate himself from guru. Otherwise, the seeker and the master will be always connected. Yeah. Uh, is it uh, very necessary to have a guru? I mean, like, we have heard this many times, they require a guru in life, you know, when you yeah. go on a spiritual path. Yeah. So it is very simple, no? Uh, whatever you think about your life, whatever you learned, how you learned. So even in uh, material uh, knowledge, the, what is we, what we learn from schools and colleges or whatever we learn in our life, we learn from somebody. So there is a need for a physical guru. So when we read books, we can get informations. But those informations to connect with, as I said, no, Karunalayam, when I was uh, mm. uh, commenting on okay. Karunalayam, I said this. So the, the feeling, no, the emotion with the Guru and the Shishya is necessary. Without okay. that, the traditional connection will not come. Uh, okay. If I, 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 I want to get some information of medicine, 
i can read uh, the test books of uh, mbbs or whatever the uh, the medical uh, books but i will get to that knowledge to become a doctor i have to go to the uh, the the way how you should approach a doctor and i have to practice under some senior doctors or get the you uh, know official certificate for that so getting information is different but into practice there are so many things we learn from a guru directly it is it is it okay. is very very in all the knowledge all the categories of knowledge it is there you mean to say you require somebody to interpret the uh, books i mean like uh, that uh, whatever shloka says require some yeah. guru to interpret and tell the correct meaning what it means yeah, not only not only that interpretation is one thing that uh, the traditional interpretation as i mentioned before uh, each okay. Uh, word okay. has uh, a traditional interpretation if you see in dictionaries you will get all the things as uh, the shruti the word shruti if you see the dictionary you will get a meaning but what i explain about mm. the shrutis this is okay. we get from our tradition our gurus gave this knowledge so we contemplate on that and when we teach we try to give those knowledge so this is a feeling you know that experience is there now whatever i said about the shrutis Uh, about what is shruti veda and all those this is some uh, some informations are there in the books but not everything similarly uh, the special thing no that we have to uh, learn that is uh, from the experience of the guru uh, like if you learn uh, uh, no the cooking from the no, cooking courses uh, online courses or from tv or whatever so you can learn how to cook they will explain it in a very elaborate way but uh, learning from a person who was cooking that particular dish for a long time then you see the difference if you learn from that person directly physically seeing in front and True. smelling it uh, tasting it so it makes the difference the appearance that the presence of the guru the mm. is something uh, like that so therefore the presence of the guru the, the the mind of the guru is necessary that because mind communicates beyond words thank you so much sorry thank to interrupt you very much. sorry to interrupt yeah hello hello yes am i audible Please? yeah i audible yes yeah i, I can, can hear have, yeah can we have more gurus more than one guru that means from yeah. wherever we learn something that or should we have only one guru no 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 the one guru system is not there in our culture because okay. uh, we have many gurus for many subjects uh, but uh, one thing is oh. Uh, that is oh, yes. the first guru who gave you the mantra initiation okay that the, that is the first guru what we called diksha guru who initiated you yes so he may not yes. taught okay. you okay. he was not a teacher but he initiated you in spiritual life or any 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 a subject okay okay so that guru become the diksha guru and first you remember that guru as his uh, our guru no so when we ask who uh, when okay. we ask who is your guru so you take the mm. name of the first guru who, who guided you for the particular subject okay after that with the permission of that guru or without the permission of that guru mm -hmm. uh, respecting the first guru and mm -hmm. worshiping the first guru mentally or whatever you know that way if he is physically there it's okay otherwise you can learn uh, the subject or the same subject 
uh, with uh, many gurus or different subject with many gurus in yes. that case that guru is called acharya we have different word for that okay. acharya we call it acharya so the guru the diksha guru is one but acharya mm -hmm. can, acharyas can be many oh so oh. this is the system okay. we made that uh, clears we have this system. Yeah. Huh? but the, does the guru has to be somebody uh, an aesthetic like a sadhu type and what not i no, think no, my no. initial no, guru no, no, i was no, no. initiated to towards spirituality from a very very ordinary woman from ah. my satsang ah. but when i started attending her satsang with her mm. i mean i was i was very fascinated mm. and uh, i i consider her to be my guru she initiated yeah. me so can she be my the yes. uh, Dik diksha guru like you said yes you see he, she is uh, she is indeed your diksha guru and uh, mm -hmm. i say guru has no dress code okay okay, okay. so uh, you don't see uh, the guru only the mm -hmm. uh, the sanyasins or uh, no, okay. yellow or this color can be the guru mm -hmm. the, the guru has no address uh, code guru can be uh, grahastha or brahmachari or vanaprastha mm -hmm. or sanyasi or anybody else. that is why i said in in various subjects there are various gurus are there in our okay. shastra it says ekakshara okay. pradadaram gurum na nindet you when you learn mm -hmm. one word from somebody yes he or she yeah. is your guru so you you should respect yeah. that that is ekakshara pradadaram gurum na nindet so ekakshara okay. sometimes uh, they translate as omkara but uh, we can normally say so if something you learn from somebody so in yeah. that yes. part for that learning you respect that then that learning will uh, i'm quite uh, relieved you, ah yeah uh, it will uh, i'm quite uh, relieved to know that because i was having a guilt feeling because yeah. i i always uh, thought i mean whatever i learned from somebody and i consider that person to be a guru mm -hmm. so i'm so glad yeah feeling yes. good and thank you i'm looking forward to attend more of your classes yeah this thank is you. my first class i am attending oh you are your first time that okay. day last i attend because i was traveling yeah, yeah you can listen to the last class, class I, uh, I, missed, but... I think we will share that you can listen to the yeah. last class also because okay. some important point we discussed in, i tried that i tried that how i want to try i mean how yeah. how do i do it? how do i go you it is available in youtube and uh, later on YouTube. we will again post in this the group so what do i type i mean what do i exactly look for in, on youtube ah yeah it is uh, the, in, in the same name tattva bodha lecture 1 one tattva bodha you will oh. get that we also in our group swam ji ah adi shankara brahma vidya peet that is the name of the youtube all right adi shankara brahma vidya i'll, I'll find it now i yeah, find you will get it. It. yeah we will post I it i didn't now. know i was groping around but i couldn't find it i was groping yeah, yeah. around but i couldn't find it but yeah, now we will post thank it you so post much. it again. thank you so yeah. much sir thank you. Okay. Thank you. okay 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 thank you so much thank oh. you so much oh kamla ji we can conclude om purnamada purnamidam purna पूर्णमुदस्ते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवाशिष्य ओ शाति 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 श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरे ओ